Hey everyone, it's Jacqueline at Pixie Dust PhD. For all of you Disney Vacation Club owners out there, it is 2024 annual dues time. You should have received your statement likely sometime last month. In this video, we will be going beyond the cut and dry, here's the price per point at every resort. We will take a look at that, but we'll look at some more interesting things as well. And if you're thinking about purchasing DVC, hopefully this look at year over year dues, as well as some of the other trends helps you make an informed decision. If you are new to the channel, I post quite a lot of Disney Vacation Club content, as well as content focused on Walt Disney World and other theme parks. I would super appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button to like this video and subscribe to the channel. You can then ring the bell icon to receive notifications whenever I post new videos. And sometimes more detailed videos like this take me a while to put together, but if you just want notifications of when the news drops, be sure to follow me over on Twitter, Instagram, and Ko-Fi. We won't get into the mechanics of paying your annual dues in this video, but just as a brief refresher. If you pay in one annual lump sum, those are technically due on January 15th. Traditionally, you do get about a one month grace period to pay those off though. You can also pay your dues monthly so long as they are being directly taken out of a US bank account. Officially, annual dues are taken out several decimal places. However, for the ease of this video, we will be rounding to two decimal places for the most part because that's how you talk about dollars and cents. I now own at two different home resorts, Bay Lake Tower and Billis at Disneyland Hotel, so I did get that information sent directly to me. However, for everything else, I am relying on data from dvcnews.com. Thank you so much to them for reporting this. You'll be seeing a lot of tables and charts in the rest of this video, and we will have numbers for all DVC locations. That being said, verbally, we will probably be focusing more on theme park locations. I am also fully ignoring subsidized dues at Vero Beach and Aulani just for ease. There aren't too many of those contracts out there, and I've literally never received a request to cover them, so we'll focus on the standard dues rates there. This is a pretty data-heavy video, and I'm not going to verbalize every single data point. Please do feel free to pause, take screenshots, and refer to the timestamps in the description below to skip around. You can also slow down the playback speed of your personal YouTube player. Click the settings icon in the bottom right, and then you will go ahead and adjust your playback speed. If slower works better for you, please do that. To start things off, here's the basic 2024 annual dues rate for Disney Vacation Club home resorts. Again, this is rounded to the second decimal place to represent dollars and cents. To begin, we're looking at this simply in alphabetical order. It can be a bit hard to discern any patterns, trends, or data of interest from alphabetical order, so let's go ahead and move on to sorting by price per point. Here now you can see the 2024 annual dues price per point sorted from lowest to highest. The villas at Grand Floridian and Bay Lake Tower annual dues are coming in at under $7.60 per point on the low end. Hilton Head is about $11.31 this year, and Bureau Beach is coming in at $13.86 per point this year. For the most part, you can see the rest of the resorts are clumping in at around the $8 to $9.5 range. Specifically, looking at the median here, you're ending up at around $8.67 or $8.68 per point. Now let's go ahead and narrow in on theme park locations. So I've grayed out the three non-theme park locations, that's Elani, Hilton Head, and Bureau Beach. And most of the theme park DVC locations are over at Walt Disney World. There are two at Disneyland, which I've highlighted here in pink. That's the Grand Californian and Villas at Disneyland Hotel. By removing three resorts from this picture, we are now left with 13 home resorts at the theme park locations. This means we can take a true median. And compared to looking at all the resorts, the median now steps down one data entry. Here now we have the Beach Club annual dues being the median at $8.63 per point. And this is true whether or not you include the Disneyland home resorts. The Grand Californian dues are slightly less than this, and the dues at Disneyland Hotel are more than this, so they don't change the median if you take them out of this picture. Now let's go ahead and look at both the 2024 annual dues and the 2023 annual dues in pure price per point. If you prefer to look at raw numbers, here is your data table. Again, please feel free to pause or take a screenshot. Personally, I prefer to look at graphical representation, so let's move on to a bar chart. Now we're representing the 2023 annual dues in price per point in the blue bars, and the 2024 annual dues in price per point in the purple bars. For data labels, you'll see the 2023 numbers reflected on the inside base, and then those 2024 numbers reflected on the outside end, so at the top. Unsurprisingly, every purple bar is higher than every blue bar, meaning that every resort had an increase in annual dues this year. And at least in pure dollars and cents, hopefully you can appreciate that the purple bars really aren't that much bigger than their respective blue bars. We didn't see huge increases in annual dues this year, for the most part. The year-over-year -year difference for Vero Beach is an entire dollar, which is considerably more dramatic than the rest of the resorts. Next, let's take this one step further and look at the difference in dollars and cents, the difference in your price between your 2023 and 2024 annual dues in price per point. I've sorted this table by that monetary difference with the smallest difference on the top and the largest difference on the bottom. You can see now the spread is from 14 cents to $1.01 difference year over year. Looking at this through the lens of focusing on theme parks, again, I've grayed out the non-theme park locations and the Disneyland theme park locations are in pink. The three largest monetary differences year over year in annual dues were all at those locations, not at the theme parks. And both of the home resorts over at Disneyland also got hit kind of hard with this difference. 
There are four resorts though at Walt Disney World that came in with an under 20 cents difference year over year. That's Boardwalk, Bay Lake Tower, Boulder Ridge, and Copper Creek. But sometimes pure dollars and cents doesn't tell the whole story, so let's go ahead and convert this to percent change. We're now taking a look at the percent increase from 2023 annual dues to 2024 annual dues. Again, we've sorted this by smallest increase on top and largest on bottom of this table. You can now see that the percent increase in annual dues year over year for all of the home resorts for Disney Vacation Club varies between about 1.6% and 7.8%. And half of the home resorts are coming in at under 4% year over year increase. That's not too shabby. Despite the Hilton Head annual dues pure price increase year over year being one of the higher entries in that list, on the percent increase, it is on the upper half, but it's not in the three worst. Instead, we start to see the Grand Californian, Beach Club, and Old Key West pop out in terms of a relatively high year-over-year -year percent increase. Narrowing in on just theme park locations, it becomes even more apparent that the Grand Californian got hit pretty hard this year. It's also worth noting that the Villas at Disneyland Hotel did receive over a 5% increase in annual dues, despite it being such a new resort and it already having relatively high annual dues to begin with. But this is only looking at the year-over-year -year percent increase from 2023 to 2024. Let's go ahead and expand this out one more year. So we'll look at 2022 compared to 2023, in addition to 2023 compared to 2024. Notably, the Villas at Disneyland Hotel is so new that we do not have that prior data point for 2022 to 2023 comparison. But everywhere else we can take a look and see how annual dues this year percent increase maybe feels to you compared to last year percent increase. Following the same pattern we had before, we have the blue bars with the data labels at the bottom being the older year, so the 2022 to 2023% increase. Then the purple bars with the data labels at the top are what we're currently talking about, 2023 to 2024% increase. All things considered, a lot of resorts fared pretty well this year compared to last year. You can see that most of the home resorts at Walt Disney World had a smaller percent increase this year compared to that of last year. The 2023 year-over-year -year annual dues was pretty rough. We had quite a few resorts at 5% or higher, many even in the 7% range. This year, many of those resorts that had pretty big increases last year are seeing relatively moderate increases this year. For example, the Polynesian last year was at almost an 8% year-over-year increase, and this year it's at under 4%. And even Beach Club, which is on the higher end of things this year at 5.6%, still fared way better this year than it did last year. There are a few notable exceptions to this trend where this year was actually considerably worse than last year. The Riviera saw a meaningful increase this year at around 4% compared to last year was next to nothing. And like we already talked about, Villas at Disneyland Hotel received a substantial increase this year. We don't have the comparator for last year, but it was a bit surprising, at least to me, to see it go up so much, basically, in its first year of new annual dues. And Elwani and Vero Beach fared worse this year when you consider percent increase this year compared to last year. And really, for both of those, both years weren't great. They're just on the higher end of things. The year-over-year -year percent increase can give you a sense of the change during a small period of time. However, let's go ahead and look at the lifetime of these resorts instead. To do this, we're going to use the compound annual growth rate. I've talked about compound annual growth rate on the channel before in considerably more detail. I will leave links to those videos in the description below if you want to explore this further. This is a metric you might more typically see in the context of investments when looking at how stocks may grow over time or similar. But here I'm going to use compound annual growth rate instead to look at how the annual dues have grown over time at each various resort. Putting it simply, this is a mean annual growth rate over a period of time. The mathematical formula takes into account the final value, which for us we're going to use as the annual dues rate this year. The beginning value, which we'll use as the annual dues rate during the opening year of the resort, and then time in years, so how long has it been since the resort's been open. I've done the math for the compound annual growth rate and expressed this as a percentage. This table shows the home resort sorted by lowest compound annual growth rate at the top and highest at the bottom. You can see here that the compound annual growth rate ranges from about 1% to about 5%. The median then is about 3.675%. This means looking at the entire Disney Vacation Club portfolio combined, you can expect annual dues to grow about 3.675% each year. But of course, you don't pay annual dues on the whole portfolio, you pay annual dues for your home resort. Thus far, Riviera and Copper Creek have fared best with compound annual growth rates of 1.06% and 1.25%. In the Grand Californians, compound annual growth rate is proving to be the highest at 5.17%. Vero Beach is not that far behind though at 4.91%. Narrowing in on theme park locations, again, I've grayed out those non-theme park locations, Alani, Bureau Beach, and Hilton Head, and pink is the Disneyland resorts. This doesn't change your min and max anchors, you still have Riviera at the bottom and Grand Californian at the top. However, excluding the non-theme park resorts, this does push the median down a little bit to 3.56%. Any one specific look at year-over-year -year change in annual dues could vary quite a lot. We've seen less than 1%, we've seen 8%, maybe we've seen more than 8% in the past even. But compound annual growth rate is a way to look at it over the lifetime of the contract. And with that in mind, you can expect three and a half to 4% or so. At least that's how it's trending so far. However, it is worth noting that compound annual growth rate does take time into account. Therefore, for resorts that haven't been open for quite as long, that time variable is not weighted as heavily in the mathematical formula. 
Notably, Riviera and Copper Creek are essentially winning in compound annual growth rate, but those are also some of the younger resorts. They haven't had as much time for their annual dues to grow and fluctuate, and the time variable just doesn't factor in as heavily. Interestingly, Boardwalk is one of the oldest resorts, so that time factor really is there in the equation, and it has had quite a long time for its annual dues to grow. And yet the Boardwalk compound annual growth rate is one of the better rates out there. It's still under 3%, despite being open for nearly 30 years. To some extent, the opposite can be said about Old Key West. Old Key West is quite literally the oldest Disney Vacation Club property, and its compound annual growth rate is now over 4%. That compound annual growth rate at Old Key West is definitely one of the higher ones, especially if you aren't counting the non-theme park locations. However, big picture, is there really a huge difference between 3% and 4%? It kind of depends on how many points you own. If you only have a 50-point contract, you probably aren't going to feel that difference in your bank account too much. But if you own 500 vacation points, well then, maybe yeah, that 1% difference in compound annual growth rate between different home resorts could really hurt your wallet. Those are some of the metrics I found most interesting about annual dues this year, but let's go ahead and look at a summary. We'll highlight the top three best and worst resorts in a few categories. First, let's start with sheer price per point in 2024. The lowest annual dues for 2024 are going to be Grand Floridian, Bay Lake Tower, and Copper Creek. On the other end of the spectrum, you'll be paying the most annual dues per point at Old Key West, Hilton Head, and Vero Beach. Looking at the percent change in annual dues from 2023 to 2024, Boardwalk, Boulder Ridge, and Copper Creek fared the best. Unfortunately, Elwani, Grand Californian, and Vero Beach got hit pretty hard. Then looking at compound annual growth rate taking this year's annual dues into account, your lowest compound annual growth rate for annual dues are going to be at Riviera, Copper Creek, and the Disneyland Hotel. But again, do note that these are all newer resorts, so this may not hold true over time. The highest compound annual growth rates taking the 2024 annual dues into account are at Bay Lake Tower, Grand Californian, and Vero Beach. Taking a look at these together, at least for 2024 annual dues metrics, it looks like Copper Creek is definitely a winner here and Vero Beach is the loser. Grand Californians also didn't fare too well, but it looks like Boardwalk and Boulder Ridge came out pretty favorably. And just briefly, let's once again narrow in on theme park locations, graying out and not considering then Alani, Vero Beach, and Hilton Head. The top three in every category don't change. The most favorable results were already all at theme park locations. However, many of the least favorable results were at these non-theme park locations, so let's go ahead and adjust our bottom three to only theme park locations. In pure price per point for 2024 annual dues, Old Key West stays in the bottom three, but we get to add Disneyland Hotel and the Animal Kingdom Villas. The new bottom three for percent change is now Old Key West, Beach Club, and the Grand Californian. And for compound annual growth rate, if we take Vero Beach out, Hilton Head would actually be next, but again, we're going to exclude Hilton Head as a non-theme park location. Old Key West then joins the ranks of least favorable compound annual growth rate along with Bay Lake Tower and the Grand Californian. Now using the lens of only looking at the theme park locations for these metrics, suddenly Old Key West and Grand Californian aren't faring too well either. I hope you found this helpful and I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you already own Disney Vacation Club, let me know what your home resort is and how you're faring with annual dues. I know each individual year can feel a little bit scary, but I do hope that seeing the compound annual growth rate soothes some of your nerves. And if you don't yet own Disney Vacation Club but are looking at buying in, perhaps you have a few different home resorts in mind, I hope that this look has provided some good perspective for you. If you do have any questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments down below, but I am definitely looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Thanks for watching, I super appreciate the support. May the rest of your day be magical, and we'll see you real soon at Pixie Dust PhD.